What's up guys and welcome back to Wall Street Millennial. On this channel, we cover everything related to stocks and investing. Have you ever considered investing in Tencent, the Chinese tech giant behind the ubiquitous WeChat app? You could buy their shares directly on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange for 495.6 Hong Kong dollars per share. This gives them a market cap of about 610 billion USD. What if I told you there is a way to buy Tencent shares at an almost 43% discount to their stated price of 495 Hong Kong dollars per share? It's the functional equivalent of buying a $100 bill for $57. As it turns out, there's a Dutch company called Prosys which owns 29% of Tencent's outstanding shares. The market value of its Tencent stake is significantly larger than Prosys's market cap. So buying Prosys indirectly gives you ownership of Tencent at a discounted price. This might seem impossible. If investors can buy Tencent shares at a discount through Prosys, why do people continue buying them directly on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange at the higher price? It seems like a massive market inefficiency and an arbitrage opportunity. But it's a lot more complicated than it looks. In this video, we'll go over what process is, how they ended up owning 29% of Tencent, and why their stock price will probably continue to trade at a massive discount to their net asset value for many years to come. Process was listed on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange in 2019, but their history goes back multiple decades. Process is a fully controlled subsidiary of Naspers, a massive South African conglomerate that started out as a simple newspaper business. In 1915, a group of people in South Africa supported by the prominent politician and businessman Jenny Marais launched the Nationale Pers Bepert, which means national press in the Afrikaans language. Many people started calling it Naspers for short. Naspers published political newspapers and magazines in South Africa and supported the South African National Party. The company continued to expand within the South African media industry, and by the late 20th century, they entered into the television broadcasting business. In the 1980s, they bought a television channel called Mnet, founded by the South African businessman Kuz Becker. Naspers' acquisition of Mnet allowed Kuz to join the company, where he quickly rose the ranks, eventually becoming CEO in 1997. Kuz had much bigger ambitions for Naspers than just being a South African media company. In the late 1990s, the internet was first getting started and the tech bubble was inflating. Kuz viewed this as a massive opportunity to put Naspers at the forefront of the digital age. In 2000, they launched one of Africa's first web portals called Media24. But Kuz had ambitions to expand beyond the African continent. In 2001, he met with a young Chinese man by the name of Ma Hua Tung, who had started an up-and-coming social media company called Tencent. Naspers paid $32 million for a 46.5% stake in the company, giving it a valuation of just $69 million. There were no real synergies between Tencent and Naspers, and they didn't integrate any of their operations. Kuz just wanted to build a portfolio of high-growth early-stage tech companies, as he thought their valuations would increase over time. As CEO, Kuz received no cash salary, and his only compensation came in the form of incentive-based stock options. As the share price rose throughout the 2000s, his ownership stake in the company grew substantially as his options vested. While Naspers' South African media business did well, the main force pushing up their share price was the appreciation of their investments such as Tencent, which IPO'd in 2004. Over the years, they built up stakes in a vast portfolio of startup companies, mostly in the media, technology, and fintech industries. In a lot of ways, they are very similar to Berkshire Hathaway and SoftBank, and that they started off as operating businesses, but their equity investments eventually became the majority of the firm's value. But one thing that made Naspers unique is its arcane corporate governance structure. Naspers needed to issue new shares to fund its acquisitions, but at the same time, Kuz didn't want to give up voting control. To this end, they created an extremely convoluted and opaque voting structure for the shares. There are two classes of Naspers stock. Class N shares are listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, and each share is entitled to one vote. They also have Class A shares, which have 1,000 votes per share, but only 150 economic ownership as Class N shares. Class A shares are not publicly listed on any exchange. Through ownership of the super-voting A-class shares, two shell companies own 55% of the total voting rights, but only an insignificant economic interest in NASPERS. The ownership of these shell companies is extremely convoluted, and it is widely speculated that Kuz Becker and his related parties have voting control over the shell companies and thus voting control over Naspers. Kuz has since stepped down as CEO, but still serves as chairman of the board of directors and has significant influence over the company. The unequal voting structure laid the foundation for the eventual discount to net asset value, or NAV, 
which both Naspers and Prosys suffer from today. After Tencent's IPO in 2004, its stock price increased dramatically as their WeChat app gained popularity in China. As of the time of recording this video, the stock is up more than 600-fold since the IPO. Naspers' 46.5% stake eventually got diluted down to roughly 30% as Tencent issued new shares. But even still, by the 2010s, the Tencent stake made up the vast majority of Naspers' enterprise value. Given that that is the case, you would expect that Naspers' share price return would be in line with Tencent's. But as you can see from this chart, Tencent, which is represented by the blue line, has increased more than tenfold over the past 10 years. Naspers, which is represented by the orange line, has increased less than fourfold. The phenomenon of Naspers stock lagging that of Tencent caused something very interesting to happen in 2016. Naspers started trading at a discount to its 30% stake in Tencent. The discount started out small but increased to as much as 30% in 2018. Remember that Naspers doesn't just own the Tencent stake. They also own stakes in dozens of other technology startups as well as their media businesses in South Africa. Theoretically, if they sold their Tencent stake and returned the cash to shareholders as a special dividend, the dividend would be more than the share price and the shareholders would still own Naspers' other businesses basically for free. You might wonder how this blatant market inefficiency is even possible. The reason this discount to NAV is able to persist is because Kuz Becker has no intention of returning significant capital to shareholders anytime soon. Naspers has made over $100 billion of gains on its investment portfolio, mostly from its Tencent stake. And while they have trimmed their Tencent position from time to time, none of the proceeds were ever returned to shareholders. They only pay a symbolic dividend yield of 0.23%. Substantially all of their investment gains and cash flows from their operating businesses goes towards buying stakes in new startups. Given that they can almost double their shareholder value by liquidating the Tencent stake, you might wonder why they have refused to do this. To understand why this is the case, you have to understand the incentive structure for Chairman Kuz Becker. While he indirectly controls Naspers through his shell companies and the supervoting Class A shares, his economic ownership is only a few percent. Thus, his incentives are not well aligned with shareholders. He doesn't really care that much what happens to the share price. He just wants to build Naspers into a global technology and media empire to bolster his own prestige and legacy in the business world. There's a risk that they'll use the Tencent money to invest in speculative startups and eventually go bankrupt. And since there's so much uncertainty as to if or when shareholders ever get any capital return through dividends or buybacks, the stock market has punished the stock with a massive discount to NAV. The value of a stock is the discounted value of its future dividends. Theoretically, if they lock their assets within the company forever and never pay a significant dividend, you could say that the stock has zero value. While Coos was not willing to liquidate the business, he did want to decrease its discount to NAV. A higher share price gives them more optionality if they want to issue new shares to fund more venture capital investments. To this end, in 2019, Naspers tried a new gimmick that made the control structure of the company even more convoluted. They created a new company called Prosys, which they IPO'd on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. Prosys would not have any real operations and would purely be a holding company for Naspers' international assets. Under the terms of the New Deal, Naspers will continue to own the African media and e-commerce companies Media24 and Tackalot.com. The value of these assets are relatively insignificant compared to their stakes in Tencent and other international companies. All of these international assets will be transferred to Prosys. Importantly, Naspers will control 74% of Prosys' voting rights, so Coos and his related parties will still have complete control. So this transaction does absolutely nothing to solve the corporate governance issues. The idea is that investors will be more willing to buy Prosys shares, as it is listed on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange compared to Naspers, which is listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. This table shows all of the publicly traded companies which Prosys owns a stake in. Tencent is the most significant by far, with their stake being worth 178 billion US dollars. Not a bad return, as they bought this stake for 32 million dollars 20 years ago. They estimate that their stakes in privately held companies is worth 34 billion US dollars. If you add the value of their listed and unlisted assets, the grand total comes out to 221 billion US dollars, or 190 billion euros. The process transaction was meant to decrease their discount to NAV, but it completely backfired, making the discount even wider. Based on their shares outstanding, this gives process a net asset value of 130 euros per share. Their share price of 74 euros represents a 43% discount to their NAV. Even if you only consider their stake in Tencent and assign zero value to everything else, it still trades at a 29% discount. 
And if you think this discount is extreme, wait until you see the current discount of NASPERS stock. While NASPERS controls the majority of voting rights for Prosys, they only have a 40% economic stake in the company. Based on Prosys's NAV, NASPERS has a net asset value of 5,946 South African Rand per share. NASPERS's current share price is only 2,551 per share. South African stocks are denominated in increments of 1 cent, so while it looks like it's 255,100, it's actually 2,551. This is a 57% discount to its NAV. Prosys already trades at a discount to NAV, and NASPERS also trades at a discount to the market value of Prosys. The discounts add together to yield this massive discount of 57%. The Prosys IPO completely failed in their goal to remove the discount to NAV. If anything, the situation is even worse now, because there's another layer of complexity in their already arcane voting and control structure. With the discount to NAV remaining stubbornly large for both companies, they decided to try another financial engineering gimmick. In May of 2021, they announced a plan for Prosys to issue new shares on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange, and they'll use the proceeds to buy shares of NASPERS. The idea is that Prosys' discount is smaller than NASPERS, so they can create value by issuing shares of the more expensive Prosys stock to buy shares of the cheaper NASPERS stock. Additionally, it will increase the free flow of Prosys and make it eligible for inclusion in some European stock market indexes. The share swap was executed in the summer of 2021, but did almost nothing to decrease the discounts of either stock. This is because NASPERS still maintains complete control over Prosys, and they're maintaining their unequal voting rights structure, which is the root cause of the problem. As long as Kuz Becker maintains his complete control over NASPERS, the discount to NAV will remain. Furthermore, the share swap transaction was very expensive, costing $144 million in taxes and fees to investment bankers. This seems like a steep price to pay for a transaction that creates no real economic value. Don't feel bad if you couldn't follow along with all the details of the NASPERS process control structure. It is one of the most complicated structures of any publicly traded company. The main point you need to understand is as follows. Both process and NASPERS stock appear to be extremely undervalued because they trade at steep discounts to their stakes in Tencent. But the reason for this discount is long-standing corporate governance issues that are unlikely to go away anytime soon. While this video is not financial advice, Many people would say that the unequal voting rights structure and empire-building tendencies of NASPERS controlling shareholders make both NASPERS and Prosys stock uninvestable. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about NASPERS? Is their 57% discounts and net asset value justified? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.